Alongside Teddy Atlas, and welcome to Chicago and the famed Aragon Ballroom for our main event of the evening. 12 rounds of heavyweights between these two great warriors. Introducing first, fighting out of the blue corner, Bill Intentions! His opponents in the blue corner, please welcome Bill Intentions! Okay guys, we went over the rules in the dressing room. Let's touch blows. When you get a fight like this that everybody's been talking about, it's always so interesting to see these opening moments here in round number one. When a high stamina fighter is fighting another guy who's very well conditioned, is there any tendency for maybe some doubts to creep into his mind? Yeah, there always are. Because you always want to have the edge. We're human beings. Boxes are no different. They want to say they have a little edge in that area. But they need to know that this is exactly what they're ready to do. Well-targeted combination by bad intentions. Nice block by bad intentions. bad intentions he got hit oh now the uppercut dismisses his opponent's headshot Teddy, most ringside experts feel that this is very much going to be a tactical fight. Yeah, both these guys throw punches like they're paying for them. And guess what? They're both cheapskates. What do you think is most misunderstood about the heavyweight division? I think it's human nature for people to see these big goliaths that they start to think that, hey, they're more sure of themselves. That these guys have more of an abundance of security about themselves, about confidence. And really, it's the opposite. In some ways, these big giants, they're really unsure of themselves because they know they can do damage. They're also worried about damage being done to them. The defense pays off as he gets rid of that downstairs. The last 10 seconds of this first round. There's no need to be on the inside. End of the round here as we're ringside at our fight night venue. Of course, we're on the road with you every step of the way with a fine crew. we got to give credit to the crew there. Robbie and Rick back in the production truck doing a nice job all cramped up in a tractor trailer. Yeah, they do a great job. They allow us to go on the air and uh, allow us to do the fun part while they're doing the grunt work. They're doing all the difficult things back there. Of course, Mike, Brian, all those guys. We appreciate you very much, and um, we're not taking you out to dinner tonight. That's what fighters do. Pulls the trigger right away after taking one. And now they're opening up. Both right hands land. Keep 
combo lands to the head. And a good counter by Bad Intentions. Bad Intentions is much better on the outside, much better when he has some space and he's at long range. So pushing off here, creating space is the right thing to do. 90 seconds to go here in this round. by bad intentions. Keep your distance. Another flush shot to the head. Good scoring counter punch by bad intentions. other the exchange was something special there's the headshot but he parries it away final 10 seconds of round number two Nice block by Bad Intentions. And this round comes to an end. It is a round that was highly entertaining. These guys really put forth quite an effort. Well, they both have high engines. They have motors that never stop going. Good job with another left hand. How is he able to do this? How is he able to take these shots? You know, one time Muhammad Ali talked about taking a chin. He had one of the great chins of all time. And what he basically talked about was that when you start to get hit those shots, you start to go down a hallway. And then you go into a gray room. You go from a light room to a gray room. And at the end of the hallway, you see a dark room. You don't want to go to that dark room. And you have a choice. You put your feet down and you start backing up. I'm not going to that dark room. This guy is not being taken to that dark room. He's committed to that left hand and it's working out. Undoubtedly, the most effective element of his entire arsenal tonight is his jab. He's so committed to fighting on the outside, and he's jabbing away beautiful. Well, Customato used to tell me, Teddy, when you're in doubt, jab. Well, this fighter, when he's been in doubt, he's jabbed. When he's been sure of himself, he's jabbed. As you said, he's made a jab fest of this all night long. Coming to the halfway point of this third round. He took a shot, but he gives one of his own. A left hand scores. Lands the counter. Bad intentions, his ability to stay on the outside and to score and control this fight is very impressive. I know as a trainer, you gotta love this. Yeah, exactly. I think that he watched Clint Eastwood in Dirty Harry. You know, Clint Eastwood used to say, a man must know his limitations. And of course, you have to know your adversary's weaknesses. Well, right now, that homework, that understanding is showing up. A little something for his opponent after getting tagged. on the combination by bad intentions. Ten seconds to go in this round. Good block there by bad intentions. And 
end of the round here, a round that saw a lot of action, the kind of round that fans pay to be here to see. Well, these are TV-friendly fighters, and we figured that coming in. Able to get rid of that one. a good block by bad intentions. Good job staying away from the danger there. Good looking counter punch. is starting to swell. Good job by drawing in his opponent and then landing the counterpunch by bad intentions. Job protecting himself. He gets hit, but he gives it right back. Just 10 seconds to go in this round. Back to action now. We're underway in what has been a completely one-sided fight. You get the sense this one may not go the distance. Able to get away from that headshot with the block. Comes right back at him with a left hand. Good defense upstairs to stay away from that offensive assault. We just have not seen the big shots from this guy. He is not throwing the power punches, Teddy. What would you say to him? Well, first of all, I would say to him, what do you think, that he's going to make a deal with you? If you don't hit him hard, he won't hit you hard? No, no, it doesn't work like that, my friend. He's going to get confidence now. He's going to take advantage of this. There he is on the inside doing well. A little give and take, and here comes the left hand. He's got his guard up really well that time, and it protects his head. And that's what fighters do. Pulls the trigger right away after taking one. 
This is why we love the sport, Teddy. I mean, this is just back and forth action nonstop. Well, Joe, what special events have happened in history, you remember where you are. Right now, I'm going to remember where I was during this fight. I'm watching a special epic right in front of me. Glad to be here doing it, too. What a war this is. to land that counter punch and getting away from one of his own by bad intentions. You get the sense that they know no other way how to fight. They are going at it back and forth, toe to toe, punch for punch. Final 10 seconds. It's over. He's coming. He's got nothing left. And just go for the head. Knock him out. It's done. Don't worry. He's swelling his Underway, but how many more will we see? You get the sense this fight could be heading towards a stoppage. He takes a shot and then commits to giving one right back. is feeling the sting of that big uppercut. <laughs> Dismisses his opponent's headshot. Devastating blow by bad intentions. Reaching the halfway point of round number six. Get that head moving. Nice block by bad intentions. Locks away that headshot. <laughs> That's a good block by bad intentions. the top good block there by bad intentions end of the round here you can see the fans really enjoying themselves tonight you know Teddy I think maybe more so than any other sport boxing fans are not just passionate like in our sports
but they are smart and savvy. They know the game inside now. Well, they follow the contestants. They do understand the parameters of the game. And you know what? They come here and they kind of demand from those fighters the performance that they expect from them. They expect the guy to box. You hear them every once in a while saying, hey, come on, you know, let's get that jab working. They act like coaches sometimes. A little give and take, and here comes the left hand. back against his opponent bad intentions is showing that he doesn't have any head movement defensively whatsoever what else is there Teddy well there's legs start using your legs a little bit get out of range one way or the other get out of the other man's talking place good work on the combination by bad intentions good scoring counter punch by bad intentions Great fight. I mean, just a great fight. Both guys giving their all back and forth. It doesn't get much better. Well struck, solid combination by bad intentions. Defense just covering up down low. Good block there by bad intentions. And you see he turned defense into offense, comes back with the counter punch. And that's exactly what he brings to the game. He makes you miss, he makes you pay. And he makes you think twice about throwing a punch later on. He's committed to that left hand and it's working out. Able to dismiss that body shot. Last 10 seconds. His opponent wanted the body, he wouldn't give it to him. Teddy, making predictions in boxing is often a dangerous task, but I'll make one right here that seems pretty obvious to me as we come to the end of that round here. This fight is going to be a brutal display as long as it lasts. It's kind of like going and watching that home run contest. Nobody's trying to hit singles or doubles. You know they're all going for the fences. That's a good block by bad intentions. Able to get away from that headshot with the block.
parries that punch away. Blocks that punch. Pulls the trigger right away with the left hand after getting tagged himself. comes to an end here and Teddy I know you've had a very busy week you've been training some pro football players this week there are many parallels to be made between the pro fight game and the pro football game. yeah there are you know physical ones and emotional mental ones I mean the physical ones are when I work with some of these behemoths you know like offensive linemen they have to punch out you know with their arms they have to make sure that they get those hands out now if they raise their elbows just like a fighter raising his elbow before he throws a jab they lose the power so you gotta teach them keep those elbows in punch out without any telegraph without any loss of power and also get those hands out at the right distance if they're a little late the big guy gets in on them and now he can control him and of course the mental aspects of it where they get into those dark rooms we talk about every once in a while where they have to remember that they have control they can make the choice you know you get in those dark rooms you start to think that you lose control of the choice that your opponent's making a choice for you no that's not the truth something for his opponent after getting tagged firing off the uppercuts great exchange Teddy this is one of those moments where you just wish you could pick up the phone and call up the world and say tune in everybody should be watching this right I have a cell phone I might do that right now <laughs> start dialing to go in what has been a memorable round. Great stuff from these two. Double jab by bad intentions. And a smart counter punch by bad intentions. Teddy, it's one of my favorite times of one of our fight broadcasts. When we make the declaration, he has to have a knockout to win. And how's he going to do it? Well, I think he's got to be a photographer. He's got to be a guy that goes in the dark room, really, Joe. And start looking at the negatives. During the night, a lot of pictures have been taken. He's got to go now and look back at those pictures and remember something. That he saw something. He saw a moment. He saw a spot where the guy dropped his hand. He pulled back. And he's got to go and he's got to act on that moment. Oh, he took some damage, but he gave some back with the right hand. Nice block by bad intentions. What a good war this has been. What a good, good, solid fight it's been. The kind of fight that tells me somebody wants to get rid of the other guy. It almost looks like they made a deal where neither one could win by decision. Where if they didn't win by knockout, it doesn't count. Good exchange, scoring well. Wow! Not a good sign. He goes to the canvas for the first time tonight. One, two, three, four, five. He went down from a big shot 
Now he's got to have some big guts to move along. You're going to find out exactly what he's made of. You can see what he's trying to do there. He wants to create space. A little push, a little shove. Why not? Get away from me. Teddy, what does he need to do right here? He has no balance. His legs aren't underneath him. Well, you know he can't move because he's going to fall on his own or the referee's going to stop it. So believe it or not, he's either got to grab or he's got to stand on the rope, stay right in front of the guy and move his head to make a miss. He can't use his legs. He is staggered and stumbling. Teddy, he's wobbling all over the ring. You know, Joe, he can't use his legs right now, so he wishes... And it's too late for it because he wasn't taught. But he wishes he was a guy who was taught how to slip right in front of a guy and make the guy miss. Then at least he could do that. Right now, his only chance is to grab because the legs are not going to be there for him. Good defense just covering up down low. Teddy, he may go down just by stumbling the way he's bumbling around this ring. Well, he's got to stop moving. Actually, you never want to fight on the ropes. This is one time he probably needs to be on the ropes just to steady him and then move his head a little bit. That might be his only shot. Oh, he's in bad shape here. He's stunned and he's wobbly. The only thing he has going for him is he's not a fighter that uses his legs anyway. And you can't use him right now. He's a guy that likes to move his head. He's got to start doing that. Try to cement those feet down the best he can and get some head movement. This is great stuff. I mean, great stuff. Bringing it every which way they are. So you remember the time you were on a vacation, you saw that perfect sunset? Oh, yeah. It was just beautiful. This is beautiful. He's a weeble wobble in the ring right now, just wobbling away. Boy, he is shaky right there. He is on shaky ground in the ring right now. He's going around now, Teddy, like his legs are made out of wet noodles. Yeah, and my mother was boiling the water because she used to make sure that that water boiled and boiled and was never al dente. These legs are not al dente. Well-targeted counterpunch by bad intentions. And the round comes to an end. We did have a knockdown in that round. Now, Teddy, if you're in the corner where your man was down on the floor, what are you telling him? Well, the first thing I do is I sit him down, I get water on the back of his neck. You know, I bring him to a sense, I make sure that he's clear and everything. And then I tell him why he got his backside put on that canvas so he can correct it. And he doesn't go out there and get caught again with the same punch. by bad intentions. Good block there by bad intentions. Targeted counter punch by bad intentions. Bad intentions is employing one of the three facets of good fundamental defense. And right now he's using the legs. Yeah, he is. And that is one of the facets. The other is to block, the other is to move your head. And right now he's controlling range. What his opponent has to do now is look to get into a place where maybe he can time him. Time him as he steps out. Punch there. Good return fire that time. And 
returns and the non-stop battle it continues on as we've reached the one minute mark to go him with a left hand. <laughs> Parries that punch intended for the head. to the end of the round. Always interesting to see how things will play out in our fights. Teddy, it's always great anticipation when we come sit ringside in the buildup of what's going to happen. Yeah, it is. And it's always great having a little electricity in the crowd. You know, it helps. I know it helps me with the broadcast to know that you have these passionate fans that are around. Offense by bad intentions. Comes right back at him with a left hand. In and out, in and out. Wow, just sit back and enjoy this one. You can tell both guys are so determined to give everything they have here tonight. So it's like the first time you heard Ray Charles sing God Bless America. You knew it was special. You knew you hadn't heard it before. I haven't seen anything like this before. starting to snowball downhill on him. Things haven't been going well. He's taken some big shots, and he's behind on the scorecards. Now, right now, he needs to look for a trick, a little bit of a spot. He's not going to win the fight with his jab. It's too late for that. He's not going to win it by putting punches together to the body on the inside. He needs to find a way to land the big shot, and I think it can happen. It can happen with a left hook when his opponent throws that uppercut. Maybe just time him and catch him with that perfect shot. Trading right hands. Boy, is this a dangerous biz. Which way will it go? Let's find out by sending it up Ladies to the ring announcer. We go to the judges' court cards. All three judges score the points. A unanimous decision. Your winner, Bad Intentions. Bad Intentions is your winner by unanimous decision. All three judges giving it to him. I didn't agree with the judges completely, but they got the right guy winning. For Teddy Atlas, 